Hi guys, in this video I'm going to analyze Mohammed Hijab's challenge to Atheist Speakers Corner. The contents of this video consists of an exchange between a non-Muslim and a Muslim apologist and then a lengthy monologue by the Muslim who goes by the name of Mohammed Hijab, someone I call the gay apologist because he constantly touches, fondles and hangs on males at Speakers Corner for some reason. Now my intention is to number one, show how ridiculous his line of reasoning is and then two, explain what makes him dishonest and a fraud and three, correct his blunder when using a common logical paradox. With the goal of instilling a sense of hesitation in others to make them listen carefully and never drop their guard. Demonstrating how half knowledge and simply following a script without understanding it will make you look a fool encouraging thinking and even better to apply critical thinking when listening to these dishonest preachers. And then finally, yep, I'm only human, showing him to be a dishonest, useless fool, making him look bad. Now what I need to point out right from the start is that there are at least two different versions of this encounter that I'm aware of. The one video on the hijab channel is edited down to 14 minutes and does not contain his dishonest tactics, just mostly him gloating. What it does contain however is a demonstration of his failure at understanding a very basic question and how he simply tries to shout down his opponent. It's disgraceful. What is really painful is reading the comments underneath the video where people don't bother to think about what just happened and only write some childish nonsense, you know, a knee-jerk reaction. Is this what Islam does to a human brain? Now, if you want some entertainment, just go to his channel, which is filled with hilarious nuggets of stupidity, willful ignorance and blatant lies. Like how to conquer, yeah, 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 conquer atheism. How? Well, just use the long debunked, dishonest, circular KCA, the Kalam cosmological argument. That's how stupid this is. But okay, I, I need to be fair as well. This is one of the more thoughtful channels and does contain some snippets which demonstrate that the creator has put some brain power into it, which you can't say for all the Dawah channels. Here in this video, this unfortunately is missing completely. We joined the conversation of the video that I'm critiquing or commenting on in the middle of something where we don't really know what happened in the beginning. At the 1 minute 30 mark, he seems to summarize the topic, which sounds like neo-Darwinian development, something he obviously doesn't understand because he says it's about reproduction and survival of the fittest. A reproductive capability and number two, survival of the fittest. Yeah? So this person apparently does not understand anything about science in general, much like most Muslims, I'm sorry to say. Like, he, he doesn't seem to understand that different species of bacteria have different living environments, but humans can survive minus 20 and plus 100. Celsius, that is. And I've experienced both in a sauna in Russia. So, And then, of course, our technology then expands the limits even further. And then at around the six minute mark, the non-Muslim has had enough of all this waffling and asks for some sort of structure, like what the point of this conversation is, stating quite rightly that the Muslim does not know enough about science to discuss it. What's the point that you're trying to make? Uh, okay, uh, I get that you don't know too much about science and right. you okay. think things are ridiculous okay, when you don't fine. understand so, them. No, let me just tell me where you're trying to go let me try and it. I'm going to switch my position, I'm going to help you get where you want to go. Okay, so that's so where do you want to go? They believe in the Big Bang and it's funny. Now, number one, you can't believe in a scientific theory. You can accept it or not, but you can't believe in a theory. Number two, the Big Bang is the umbrella term for a multitude of models. So no, there is no consensus as to what happened at that moment within that first second. It's not like evolution where every normal biologist agrees with the concepts. In cosmogony, it's a little bit different. And on other topics, he's plain deluded and misinformed, making claims Atheism like... Atheism is not as we've just described. It's a very new phenomenon. <laughs> as it relates to... No, no, as it relates. Yes, it is. And then, in reality, like around a thousand years ago, somebody, a, an Arab called Al-Mahari, made a statement. They all err, Muslims, Jews, Christians and Zoroastrians. Humanity follows two worldwide sects. One, man intelligent, without religion. And the second, religious, without intellect. 
So humans without a God belief, I think, have always existed. But this, okay, I call him a deceitful character because he loves one thing, and that is asking trick questions to make others feel bad and to boost his own ego, making non-critical Muslims watching this get the impression he's asking something meaningful, some, something that is impressive, which he is not. Is truth important to you? Exactly. Yeah. Is it? It is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's nothing useful here. I mean, asking if you can use rationality to prove rationality is remarkably useless. Because yes, the brain assesses reality and the brain is part of reality. So yes, we use the brain to assess the brain. That's the way that it is. Okay, back in, in the original video, the Muslim Muhammad does his best to try and formulate where he is going with all this chatter. And he says that from an atheistic perspective, you can't assign a value to a human being. Really, that's, that's what he says. From an atheistic perspective, my point is that you can't attach a value to human beings. In his... I don't know, this is like a 7th century superstition-driven camel herder mentality. A human must have a value. A value that is higher than that of any other animal. That's absurd. Yet, he claims he has lost only a few debates. How? <laughs> the non-Muslim now cuts to the chase and confronts him with his God belief and his intent to smuggle in a God somewhere. He patiently explains what the steps are before one can even start thinking a God-based value. But the Muslim guy can't grasp it. You don't understand the argument. You say with God, okay, then human beings are special because of your story of God. Right? Now to make that claim as being true, you have to demonstrate that there's a God. Why do I have to demonstrate it? And well, now I understand why he deleted all this before uploading it to his channel. He is being shown for the fool he is, incompetent, illogical, irrational, and only faith-based. The entire exchange now gets quite laughable. All he can do is throw around the word philosophical, hoping it will scare away questions which are awkward for him. But here are the facts. Or value can be assigned to human beings if there's a God. I'm not even, I'm not making an argument for God. This is, this is absurd. How can you claim there's no value, whatever that may be, without a God, without making an argument for said God? How ridiculous is this? You can't say you can't make a value judgment without God and then God and then two seconds later say, I'm not making an argument for a God. Come on. The Muslim now follows this up with absolute gibberish, doing what he loves doing, burying others in words. If I say there's, a, there's an entity that's transcendent, and that has a certain attribute of, say for instance, rationality, then that it would make sense, rationally say, uh, speaking, it would make sequential sense for me to say that that entity could then endow another um, entity with the same or other uh, kinds of attributes. So and next he goes and claims there are objective moral values which is equally ridiculous because he does not define objective and what we would compare that to objectively. So, and it goes from bad to worse. I don't need to make a claim for God's existence to believe in it. I don't need to make a claim for God's existence to believe in him. What? Yes, sir. Do you believe there's a God? Yes, sir. All right, that's your claim. All right, fine. No, it's not okay. my claim. That is a claim. And he realizes his blunder when the non-Muslim shows him how ridiculous he is. And now comes the switch where it's suddenly, well, it's conditional. It's the if there was a God, then there would be objectivity, which is an absurd claim given the descriptions in the existing books which are contradictory and brutal. And the Muslim now claims he's defining gods, which he doesn't, and then goes on with his objectivity claim. Biting himself by claiming his God would be all wise and all knowing, of course, resulting in knowing what is best ever. So he's defining his God to be what he wants him to be, to project his subjective wishes onto this God, and then claims the God he has just defined has given him what he has just defined. <laughs> and then he says, This is not circular. Oh, wow. 
And of course, the, the non-Muslim understands this, and then comes the killer question. How do you know that what God does is best? How does God know what That's he good. does is best? Right. How so does our he know? Definition of- so how do you know what God knows is best? Or how does God know what God knows is best? And now we get to see a mental meltdown. The Muslim is unable to answer this. He attempts to deflect and run, but he doesn't have a chance here. There's nothing he can do. He goes back to his circular argument. He still doesn't understand a circular, where he clearly defines as God what his God is, who then assigns what is good. Why is that so difficult to grasp? And then, well, maybe the Muslim can challenge others to fight him physically. <clears throat> yeah, but when it comes to brain power, there's not much substance. Now, I know there's a lot of people that, that think he's all docile and, and that he's reasonable and he's, and he's, he's making a lot of reasonable claims and he's, 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 he can talk and he can be jovial and things. Like that. Not, not really. Not, not really. I, I don't see this. Because like Shabir, he suddenly reverses the accusation and in his desperation and despair, he accuses the non-Muslim that his question is circular, a circular question. Right. And now comes the beginning of what will turn out to be a complete disaster for this Muhammad hijab guy. In his attempt to get an answer, the non-Muslim pulls a five-pound note from his pocket and offers it in return for an answer to his, what I call, a reasonable question, and which he can sense will never materialize because it's a checkmate position for the Muslim. The hijab guy now shows he can't handle this and doesn't actually seem to understand what he is being asked by saying he's been asked, how do I know what I know? Which is not in the least what the question is. It's about a God knowing something is good or something is the best for us humans. So how do I know that this God knows and how does this God know that this is the best for us humans? How, how, can, he, how can he, the Muslim, know this? And then here it comes. It's a paradox in itself. Basically, Ten times if a liar says to you, I'm telling the truth. Do you, do you, do you believe him? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes Please, or no I'll question. give you 10 pounds. No, no, I'll give you 10 pounds. You had five and it was ripped. I'll give you the new one. No, no, okay. I'll do it. No, no, I'll give you. Tell me, no, if you answer the question with your yeah. muddy hand. If a liar says I'm telling the truth, do you believe him, yes or no? No. Don't touch my, my money. No. No. <laughs> give me the money. You don't believe him? No. Give me the money. No, give me the money. What a liar. No, no, He's like, oh, oh, 10, pounds, 10 pounds if you can answer the question. No, no. He then pulls out no, five your, your pounds. Answer I answer, answer the question and to, he won't give it to let, me. Let me explain to you. Okay. Why Does a liar, would you believe a liar? I wouldn't believe a liar. Okay, Especially man. one who's like, no, 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 I'll give you money no, if you answer my question. I know you're shaking. Would I believe you? No, you're a liar. It's okay. Yeah. I answer the question. Say yes or no. Where's this money gone? Okay, sir. Where's this money gone? Why do you lie? Why do you lie? That looked terrible, man. So I gave him a genuine, paradox, a paradoxical example of another question that has no meaning. So I said, if a liar, if a compulsive liar says I'm telling the truth, do you believe in him? Now you can Google this, ladies and gentlemen. This is called the liar paradox. This is where Muhammad Hijab digs his own grave. Let me pause here for a second. There's a, there's a well-known paradox, a logical paradox, known as the liar paradox, where liar says, I am lying. Can you believe him? This, well, has no answer, obviously, because if this is true, then he is not a liar, and so on, so easy. Back in Hyde Park, the Muslim apologist, in his inability to think and to think critically at that, slaughters this paradox and makes a mistake, deviating from his script. And it can happen. It's, it's human, okay? But this is what kills him. Because in his arrogance and his state of cognitive dissonance, he even says he will up the ante and pay £10 for the answer of his botched question. Please, I'll question. give you £10. And the non-Muslim now answers the question, which is, if a liar says, I'm telling the truth, do you believe him? Which is obviously an easy question. And he says, no, because he's a liar. And now the Muslim who can't understand what is going on and who can't think straight refuses to pay up for some reason. I suppose it's the built-in apologist brainwashing where what is not allowed to be can't be. And it's quite sad to watch, actually. The Muslim quickly hides his money <laughs> for some reason, unable to handle that he's just been exposed as a primitive liar. And is the Muslim embarrassed in any way? No, he thinks this is all good. 
And that's when the non-Muslim walks away, leaving behind a stupefied and very confused Muslim. <laughs> but in his arrogance and false sense of superiority, he now goes off and mocks the non-Muslim. He goes into a rant showing he did not understand the original question and still insists that he is the hero when he's just a fool and a liar. And he digs himself deeper and deeper. Was this question, the liar paradox, like these other paradoxical questions, never yield positive or negative results. They are meaningless in themselves. It's like the question, ladies and gentlemen, if God creates a, can God create a rock so heavy that he can't lift it? No. Can his God create something indestructible is not a paradox. It is proof that this God is limited to human logics, nothing more and nothing less. Unlike a square circle, something indestructible can theoretically exist. And so far, humans have managed to destroy everything. His pitiful attempt at ridiculing the non-Muslim fails and no words can rescue him from the place where he has put himself. He now claims the non-Muslim is begging for five pounds, which well, I mean, he offered ten for an answer he got. So it's only a matter of honesty. So insulting the person and then throwing around expressions like ad hominem, which he obviously doesn't even understand, can't help him. Is this what Islam does to a brain? And, well, now he goes off into La La Land again with his comical challenge. Yours, yours, any atheist, come here and show me how objective morality can be asserted using any kind of method. Now, if you can't do this, calling me a liar is not a problem because on the atheist worldview, lying is as good as telling the truth. Coming from an ignorant, immoral liar, this is actually quite rich. But other Muslims will still applaud him, blind in their faith. They will applaud his comparison between atheists and shit, which I will not comment in any way. So in this discussion, at least, Muhammad Ijab has shown himself to be a complete fool and a liar who is arrogant, unable to take a step back and think or even reconsider that and he might be making a mistake. His condescending attitude of trying to make the non-Muslim then look bad and, and trying to make him look like a pitiful subject or something only sort of rounds it off. Ah, it's a shame. And then finally, he promises to say one last thing and then goes on and on. Promises, promises by a Muslim apologist.